This is Revelation chapter 13, and we're going to look at the ultimate villain. In every story, you always have a villain of some sort, and the Bible is no different. The main enemy in the Bible is no doubt Satan, and he likes to counterfeit God in everything he does, so he too has a trinity. And this trinity is mentioned in Revelation 16, 13, where it says, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So there you have the satanic trinity, if you want to call it that. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, the dragon being the devil, the beast being the antichrist, and then you have the false prophet. We will see that the trinity in this chapter is satanic, and we will find out who the ultimate villain is. Number one, we see that he is a beast. Revelation 13, 1 says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So John is standing on the sand of the sea and sees a beast rise up out of the sea. Ever notice the slang terms today about, or, or among the young people when they are watching their favorite athlete or something, they will say, he is a beast, or that guy is beastly. In the NBA, they refer to LeBron James as the beast of the East. People love superhuman human-like characteristics in another person. That is why they love to watch sports and refer to the athletes as gods or being godlike. Uh, they love to see superhuman abilities on America's Got Talent. This is why they would fall in love with the ultimate supervillain who will be a superhuman-like person. Notice in verse 1 that he has on his head the name of blasphemy. He will pretend to be a friend of God but he is really an enemy of God. He is a blasphemer. And then if you read Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So the Antichrist is the mystery of iniquity. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 says, The mystery of iniquity doth already work. He works through Antichrist. And the Bible says even today there are many Antichrists, and it is his spirit behind people who blaspheme. He blasphemes in Second Thessalonians 2, 4, when he sits in the temple of God, claiming to be God. That's the name of blasphemy. The name of blasphemy is that he is going to go into the temple and say, I am Christ. And in Matthew 24 and verse 5, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The Antichrist is going to do just that. The most blasphemous thing he can do is claim to be Christ. And many people today are paving the way for a sinful man to be referred to as Jesus Christ. They call Michael Jordan the black Jesus. They refer to men as gods. So in Revelation 13, 1, John sees the Antichrist for what he is, a literal beast. And while the people on earth will see him as a great man, he is a very wicked man. Ecclesiastes 3, 18 says, I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. So you see men referred to as beasts in the Bible even. For us to see the wickedness in something, God has to make it manifest to us. As the verse said, He has to open our eyes to it. Many Christians today have no discernment. They can't tell the difference between good and evil because the more they stay out of the Bible, the more the line is blurred between good and evil. You need spiritual discernment, especially in the days we are living in. So there is no excuse for a Christian not to see the evil in things. Revelation 13, 1 says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. 
The beast's physical appearance resembles the dragon because he has seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads represent rulers over different periods of time, and there has been many antichrists throughout time like Hitler. And Satan is always grooming a man that could potentially be an, the Antichrist. There are many Antichrists, but one true Antichrist. Who knows if Satan knows which man that he is grooming? Who knows if he even knows that that is going to be the Antichrist? He may just be always grooming a man and getting him ready so that he could be that coming future wicked man. 1 John 2.18 says, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. The first thing we see about this ultimate villain is that he, is, he has a satanic final authority. Revelation 13.2 says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. While Bible believers have the King James Bible pinned with the finger of God as their final authority, the Antichrist, the ultimate villain, will have the dragon as his final authority. Revelation 12, 9 says, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. From this verse we can see that the dragon is Satan himself, and this is where the Antichrist gets his authority from. In the counterfeit trinity, Satan would represent the Father, and the Antichrist would represent the Son. And of course, the false prophet would represent the Holy Spirit. And next we see he is a persistent villain. Just like any good villain in the horror movies or comic books, this villain comes back to life. Once you think he is dead, you turn around and his body isn't laying dead on the ground anymore. He's actually up ready to kill you again. So he is a persistent villain. Revelation 13, 2 says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So he is going to get a deadly wound, and then if then he dies, and he is resurrected. This will counterfeit Jesus Christ who also died and resurrected. And let's see where his deadly wound is. If you look at Zechariah eleven seventeen, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Today, just like many people refer to men as beasts who are good in their sport or in a certain area, they will also try to figure out who is the greatest of all time whether it be in sports or anything in life, and just like the disciples debated among themselves who would be the greatest, if you have seen any sports broadcast, they always talk about if LeBron James has passed Michael Jordan as the GOAT, which stands for the greatest of all time, well, the Antichrist is going to step on the scene, and he will be considered the answer to all of our problems. He will be seen as the greatest leader of all time he will be considered the goat and satan wants to be like the most high he craves worship he will love to be considered the goat even if it is only for a short time and isn't it strange how baphomet has the head of a goat and notice what people will say about the antichrist the ultimate villain in revelation thirteen four. it says and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The Antichrist will be so powerful that it will seem like he is invincible, like Superman. And Satan will finally gain the worship he is longing for through the Antichrist. Satan has always desired worship. He wanted to be like the Most High and ask for worship from Jesus Christ himself in Luke chapter 4. And if you look at Romans one twenty three through 25, it says, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, 
to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So the people during this future time will say, Who is able to make war with him? People will be afraid to contest him, just like they were Goliath. Yet Goliath gets killed by David, a type of Christ. The people called Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord. And the Antichrist will have the praise of men similar to this. And they will worship the creature more than the creator. They will worship an image. And next we see that the Antichrist, the ultimate villain, will be Satan's mouthpiece. He is a persistent villain who is Satan's mouthpiece. Similar to how God gets a human mouthpiece like Moses and the prophets and other preachers. Revelation 13.5 says, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Notice what God said to Moses in Exodus 4.15 and 16. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. And will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. So this shows a man can give himself to God and speak the words of God. Or yield himself to Satan and speak blasphemies. The Lord's words are pure words. The devil's words are blasphemies. Corrupt communication, lies, complaints, and gossip. The most common sin in the Bible is sins of the mouth. So we see that the Antichrist gets the head wound, is healed, and resurrected in the middle of the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation, because it says he will continue forty and two months, which is three and a half years. The first half is three and a half years, and the last half is also three and a half years. Revelation 13.6 says, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Just like we said before, he will stand in the holy place claiming to be God. This is blasphemy. It is blasphemy for anyone to call themselves God or refer to someone else as God. When someone disrespects Jesus Christ, they are blaspheming the only name that is worthy of praise. James 2, 7 says, Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? And just like any good villain, the Antichrist will be a persistent villain, and he will hate the good guys. Revelation thirteen seven says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The Antichrist will hate the people of God. In Revelation 11:7, he will overcome the two witnesses and kill them. He will be behind the killing of millions of God's people and will make Hitler seem soft. He will make or he will have power and he will prevail until Jesus comes. Jesus is the prevailing king. He always wins and always will win. At the end of this time, the Antichrist will be cast into the lake of fire. And now we see that this villain is an idle shepherd. He will be worshipped. Revelation 13.8 says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Note that those who worship him will have their names blotted out of the book. In Revelation 3.5 it says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. The main part of overcoming in the time of Jacob's trouble is by not worshiping the Antichrist. Revelation 13.9 says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. Be sure to hear what the Lord says. People have selected hearing when it comes to God. They only want to hear the grace and love and long suffering of God while they leave out his wrath and judgment. You need to hear his warnings and not just his words of comfort. And lastly, we see that the Antichrist is a defeated foe. Revelation 13.10 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. 
So just like in any good superhero movie, the good guy always wins. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. When you have a movie where the bad guy wins or something bad happens at the end, that is Satan's wishful thinking for how he wish wishes the future is going to turn out. Maybe Satan thinks he's going to win. Maybe he has so much pride he thinks he's still going to win. But most likely he's seen the Bible turn out right every single time. And he knows he's going to lose. And he knows he has a short time even today. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back with a sharp two-edged sword proceeding out of his mouth. And he will slay the Antichrist with the sword. I believe with all my heart 100% that Jesus Christ is going to win. It's as much as done. And I have not seen Jesus Christ face to face. I have not seen God. I've not been around God's throne. And I have 100% faith that it's going to turn out just like the Bible says. Satan has seen Jesus Christ on earth face to face. He's went toe to toe with Jesus Christ. He's been around God's throne. He's read the Bible. He's seen every bit of the Bible turn out to be right. Most likely Satan knows himself that he is a defeated foe. And Revelation 20 and verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Just like in this life now, the bad guys are caught and put in prison. Only here it is a lot worse than prison. It is a lake of fire and they can never get out again. There won't be any more resurrections like the serial killers have in the horror movies. There will finally be peace. But if you don't want to be around to face this ultimate villain, then you need to be saved. In 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4 it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So that God, the gospel that you need to believe to be saved is that Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ died by shedding his blood. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. He died for you because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. And not just a physical death that you'll face, but also a second death where you are cast into the lake of fire. That's the penalty for sin. That's the penalty for rejecting God's Son. John 3, 3, 3.36 says that you are under the wrath of God if you're not believing on Jesus Christ. It says, For he that believeth on the Son hath life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So if you're not saved, the wrath of God is presently abiding on you. You are yet in your sins. And if you die like you are, you will go to hell. If you want to be saved, realize you're a guilty sinner on your way to hell and come to Jesus Christ as that guilty sinner and put your faith in his finished work on the cross to get you to heaven. Quit relying on your own self-righteous works that are no good and that can't merit salvation. You're going to have to rely on Jesus Christ and his payment for sin that he paid for on the cross. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on him for salvation.